Hello everyone, and welcome to today's live broadcast, Rapid Test to Decipher Microbiome Function in Health and Disease. I am Brenda Kelly Kim of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. We are delighted to bring you this educational web seminar presented by LabRoots and sponsored by Kyogen. Infectious diseases are a leading cause of death worldwide, and a better understanding of the lives of microorganisms and their interactions with host cells and animals is critical to the prevention of illness and fatalities. Kyogen understands your specific research challenges and offers you innovative solutions that cover every single step along this journey, not just technologies, but bridges from samples to insights. Sample to insight means Kyogen offers you the industry's most reliable sample technologies because samples matter to your success. Our top quality assays and panels enable you to accurately analyze and identify diseases and genetic variations. Our bioinformatics software and curated knowledge bases transform your raw data into relevant, actionable findings. Sample to insight. The insights you gain may lead to one small step or a giant leap forward for science and healthcare. Partnering with Kyogen, your work can make a difference. For more information, please visit www.kyogen.com. Before we begin, we have a few announcements. This webcast is designed to be interactive, and we encourage you to ask questions during the event. You can submit questions by typing them in the Q&A box, which can be found by clicking on the green Q&A button in the lower left of the presentation window. We'll try to answer as many of your questions as we can. You can enlarge the slide window by clicking on the screen icon in the lower right-hand corner of the slide window. If you have any technical problems viewing or hearing this presentation, please click the support button at the top right of your presentation window or submit your problem through the green Q&A button lower left. I would now like to introduce today's speaker, Anisha Karkia. Anisha is a molecular biologist who is responsible for sample to insight solutions that are provided through Kyogen's microbial DNA qPCR portfolio of products. Anisha's research was focused on discovering biomarkers in liquid solutions. Prior to her current role as an associate global product manager, she worked as a biological research content specialist in which she helped her customers plan their projects and the right products from Kyogen. I will now turn it over to Anisha for her presentation. Thank you, Brenda, uh, for the kind introduction. Uh, today, I will be talking about a rapid test to decipher microbiome function in health and diseases. First, I would like to introduce you Kaijin. Uh, we have the new mission statement, which is uh, we are the leaders in sample to insight solutions. And when I say sample to insight, that means uh, we have all the solutions for sample technologies for extraction on, of any complex samples that you are dealing with in your research, along with the assay technologies. That is, once you have extracted your samples, you would like to experimented, research it using our assays and arrays. And Kaijin provides really good solution for assay technologies. Moving forward, we have all the bioinformatics solution that provides the right insight to the researchers along with the complete automation system. So we provide the complete workflow from sample to insight and help researchers to answer the complete biological question that they're looking for instead of just giving them part solution in terms of products. For today's agenda, I would be talking about introduction to microbiome, technologies that unlock the metagenomics, that would also include the need and also all the available methods for rapid technologies. And then I would be talking about population studies and disease associations with these metagenomics and microbiome. And how do we really design assays for the microbiome? Moving forward will be the solutions for identification or profiling from Kaijin itself. And then I will be summarizing the complete webinar along with opening the platform for questions. 
So what is our cellular composition of the organism made of? It has been estimated the number of microbial cells that live in and on a human body. Cells are outnumbered. Human cells are outnumbered by a factor of 10. That means the microbiota is really important to be under, to, to understand, uh, to be understood for any of the research, for any of the infectious disease, for any of the metagenomic diseases. Some of the normal nomenclature used in the industry are microbiota, that are the microbes that live in a specific location, example, the human body, gut, soil, etc., or metagenomics, that is the study of the collection of genomes derived from a specific sample or community. Then we have microbes or microbial species that are microscopic organisms that can be either single or multicellular. So how, why is the complexity and function of this genomic content so important? As we all know that the function of the microbiome enables individual survival. So each organism has developed the genetic content for its own survival in a specific environment. We have different kind of metabolisms going on inside our body. It is carbohydrate metabolism, lipid metabolism, nucleotide, amino acids, etc. And somehow all of these metabolisms are involved with different microbes and different microbial organisms. These metabolism turn to a local nutrient sources and also the two other factors, the virulence factors that are there for stabilizing the colonization and also antibiotic resistant genes to metabolize these toxins. But in a nutshell, since the microbes play such an important part in these metabolisms, it does play an important part in other diseases, infectious diseases, etc. So it is very important for researchers to really understand what, how the metagenomics or how the microbial content or how the microbes or which microbes are really affecting and, and getting associated with different conditions in a specific disease area. So now I would be talking about the technologies that unlock the metagenomics. The current methods for microbial analysis, uh, which are available in, with the researchers and with the industry are culture method, microarray, next generation sequencing, MALTI, that is your mass spec, and the qPCR, that is target dependent 16S rRNA or gene dependent. Now, the culture, which has been the gold standard method and has been the most cost effective method and used worldwide within the industries and with the researchers, have been there forever, but it has some limitations to itself. When we say about limitations, uh, we talk in terms of time consuming. It involves multiple steps and it takes around five to seven days. It cannot identify all the pathogens at the same time. And also the culture conditions are different for each pathogen. So you have to grow different cultures to grow different pathogens at different conditions. It also involves the expenditure in terms of risk and logistics, require extensive biolog microbiological training. And also there's a lot of waste that is generated. So with the industry and with the clinical pathology, it has been come to a need that the rapid detection methods are really important for these microbial detection and quantification. With this, two methods came into existence, which are tagged as rapid methods. The first one is the NGS for the whole genome sequencing or 16S rRNA sequencing. Whereas NGS is really good for both discovery and comparative analysis, it still has some challenges to itself, such as technical challenges, it has high cost, it is not amendable to routine testing at this time, it has complex data output, so it's really difficult to make understanding of what kind of output data you have received and how to analyze it, and it's still two days workflow. It has definitely reduced from seven days to two days, but still a longer procedure for clinical routine testing or for industries for applied testing, etc. 
Then the other method that came into existence is real-time PCR, which is specific. It only detects the target sequence. It is sensitive. It can detect low copy numbers. It is very rapid. It is easy to set up and the detection is under 90 minutes. And also it can be standardized. So, we, so a customer or a researcher is able to create automated protocols and also generate stable chemical designs. So if you look at the 16, uh, the qPCR technology in general, the 16S rRNA region of the bacteria plays a really important part, not only in the qPCR technology, but also in the NGS and other rapid testing methods. With the help of the 16S rRNA region, specifically in bacteria, one can identify and determine 95% genus level, 97% species level, and 99% strain level of the bacteria. So our bacteria 16S rRNA region is made up of conserved region and variable regions. And these variable regions in the, in the base pair of 1 to 1500 would determine what species of the bacteria this bacteria really is. So the 16S RNA gene has become the most important and most of the qPCR technology and NGS has been done around this region. Of course, it would vary for different species such as fungi, viruses, etc. So how did we all get started? The first report of the composition of the human body site was done by NIH where it was published in Science and it said it talked about metagenomic analysis of the human distal gut microbiome. And then all the researchers thought that if we can do one, can we do them all? That's where a lot of interest and microbiome metagenomic studies came into existence and a lot of grants started happening. Excuse me. An international effort to catalog the microbiome came into existence. HMP, Meta HIT, Suzelec, International Human Microbiome Consortium, etc. They all came into together to put an international effort to catalog this microbiome. The first NIH human microbiome project was started in 2008, where NIH came together to profile five body sites, nasal, mouth, skin, gastrointestinal system, and urogenital. And a lot of comparative studies between the individuals were conducted in terms of healthy, patient, uh, healthy people versus diseased patients, treated samples versus untreated samples, twin studies, difference between the type between the two individuals or two animals. And all of this helped us to create a database. In fact, from Kaijin, we have created and we have associated microbes along with these body sites. And if you would like to get a list, please feel free to ask after the webinar. And with this, the NIH funding across the institutes of microbiome related studies increased from 2008 drastically to, 2000, drastically to 2013. If you see these, uh, if you see these uh, beads with the yellow sign, which is increased drastically to 2013, and this shows the number of funding projects that increased, and also the, the patents and the research papers, the publications around the microbiome increased drastically from 2008 to 2013, and the trend is increasing now. Another really important area of interest and research are the 23 uh, are the antibiotic resistant genes, and the antibiotic resistant genes uh, has has been seen to create around 23,000 deaths. Uh, in the US. And CDC estimated that uh, the cause sickness uh, in 2 million people and 23,000 deaths per year. And also in March 2015, 
Obama administration released national act plan to combat this particular uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria. And also in June, uh, on June 2, uh, 2nd, uh, 2015, the Washington, uh, the National Cattlemen Beef Association uh, participated in White House Forum on Antibiotic Stewardship. So a lot of researchers have got into the action to really read and also make associations uh, about these antibiotic resistant genes to different diseases. Another area which is a lot of interest to researchers as well as applied testing companies are the food industry and microbes. From 1837, where, where we first actually analyzed the role of yeast in alcoholic fermentation, uh, it's been the trend to use the microbes in a controlled condition to ferment or to produce various food products have increased. And also there are around 3,500 traditionally fermented food in the world. If we use these microbes in a controlled manner, then we are able to produce different food items. But at the same time, if it is not controlled or if another strain or another species of microbe has grown, it can lead to a lot of, of uh, of products which are not very important or necessary for the food and could spot and can spoil the food. Uh, through the data uh, from the agriculture and food contamination scenario, uh, CDC estimated that each year roughly one in six Americans of 48 million people get sick. That is around one to eight thousand people are hospitalized and 3,000 die of foodborne diseases. And this is all because of some microbial infection. So it is really important for the food industry to QC their products and to understand these microbes in depth. So for this, um, to help the industry and to the clinical diagnostic market, it is really important for researchers to come up with this comparative studies with the database uh, to understand and to make associations with these, uh, with some particular microbes to the different uh, diseases, infections, QC criteria, etc. So some of the popular applications that have been going on in the industry for example, uh, some of the hospitals are detecting antibiotic resistant genes and MRSA in feces of the newborn babies to associate back to certain diseases. And also some of the institutes are testing individual patients before and after their visit to the other countries to really learn about the antibiotic resistant genes change when they are traveling. There's another prevalent studies, uh, study that is going on are, are around the hospital acquired infection where uh, hospitals are keeping records of customers leaving the hospital regarding if they really acquired the infection in the hospital. So they're doing the antibiotic resistance uh, QC right when the customer is, uh, right when the patient is leaving. And also a lot of universities and hospitals are detecting these antibiotic resistant genes to prevent the surface contamination in hospitals by seeing different methods, what is the best way to clean the area around the hospitals. Then another one is to test antibiotic resistant genes in women's health swab samples and various other diseases. If we look at the healthcare and the women health industry applications, then a lot of researchers are looking into respiratory infection, intestinal infection, metagenomic diseases around the uh, stool samples, the nasal samples to come up associations with certain diseases and certain microbes together. And also there's a need for routine testing in women health from the cervical, uh, from cervical samples uh, to test for bacterial vaginosis. In the food and the wet application, if you look at then all the breweries, uh, the uh, food processing companies, the animal food, baby food, etc., they need to detect all these pathogens for the QC criteria. So there's a lot of demand and a lot of research that is needed to associate certain microbial species with certain function so that it can be implemented in the clinical diagnostic market and also in the applied testing market uh, just to uh, get a better QC and better health control. 
So I would be now talking about some of the focused metagenomic applications. What, were, what are the examples of the next wave of the microbiome experiment? Uh, these are the examples that uh, Kaijin conducted with some of the collaborators and uh, we performed, the collaborators used uh, Kaijin PCR arrays, that is all the microbial detection assays on a plate uh, and uh, came up with uh, certain experimental uh, microbiome experiments and uh, I would be going ahead and showing uh, some of the uh, data over here. So the first experiment. Uh, we wanted to learn. Uh, it's a small epidemiology study uh, which talks about antibiotic resistant genes in the human gut. So we really wanted to understand is this antibiotic genes is in our food supply or not. So what we did uh, we took the samples uh, from the sewage, uh, from the uh, crops, from the meat, and from the stool samples of the human beings to really understand if these antibiotic resistant genes are getting transferred in the food supply. And now one can think, how are we thinking that it might be transferring in the food supply? So the theory, the hypothesis begins when uh, if you take the antibiotic resistance samples, uh, if you take the DNA samples uh, from the sewage, it can be transferred to the, food of, to the crops where the crops are grown and those sewage samples are used uh, as fertilizers. And those crops can be hence eaten by the, uh, by the cattle and the cattle is usually used uh, to give out milk and the meat which the humans would eat or they would eat the crops. So if we have a source of antibiotic resistant genes in the sewage or anywhere in the supply chain, then it gets turned around. So this is the complete hypothesis of the story uh, of the experiment where uh, the researchers, uh, they took all the four samples and they tested it on a 96 well plate of a qPCR where each well is one of the antibiotic resistant genes. So this KPC is one antibiotic resistant gene which is present in one well. So in the same manner, this 96 well plate, uh, you can see uh, the you have 84 antibiotic resistant genes till the OPR. Till the OPR uh, J and then rest of them are the pan bacteria and PPC which are present for the control of the plate. Then the researchers uh, followed the simple steps that is they extracted the DNA from various samples uh, from various metagenomic complex samples and using the Kaijin Kai and Kit tool and then they uh, put the sample mix it with the qPCR master mix, aliquoted in each well in the plate, and then perform the and then ran it on the real-time PCR machine. Once they ran it on the real-time PCR machine, two kinds of experiments are possible during the profiling and identification. For this particular experiment, they perform identification, that is to know if a particular antibiotic resistant gene is present in the sample or not. So here are some of the data. Uh, the first table uh, over here shows the sewage samples. The first data over here shows the sewage sample. Uh, the DNA was extracted from this and when it was run on the PCR plate, including 96 antibiotic resistant genes, uh, we found out that most of these genes right over here with the resistant classification uh, just specified right next to it uh, had positive antibiotic resistant presence. And then uh, we also performed the samples from this tool uh, from the uh, from the stool of the human beings living around the same area and it was it went through the same experiment pro process of uh, testing it on the antibiotic resistant gene panel and uh, the researchers uh, found out that the arm B, MEF A and TET A were found in all or most of the stool samples tested showing that they may be highly prevalent in the gut. 
So these antibiotic resistant genes have been reported to be isolated from bacterial strains originating from food suggesting a possible source of the origin. And also, uh, there were 14 antibiotic resistant genes from different resistance classification that were present in the metagenomic sample. The verification protocol determined that these genes were present in the sewage samples as well. Just to confirm, uh, we further did a study uh, where we took three samples, beef, chicken, and pork, and another three set of samples from vegetables that were carrot, lettuce, and potato. It would they ran, uh, the DNA extracted from there were ran on the same antibiotic resistance panel, and the results were correlated with the seaweed sample and the stool samples. And, excuse me, and there was another interesting result that the collaborators and Kaiden saw were the antibiotic resistance genes that were there in the meat samples were similar and also the genes that were there in the vegetables were mostly similar and they were all correlating back to the data from sewage and also uh, with the stool samples. Now this is a small study that was conducted and the study is now taken over and we are doing a full grown study uh, with the collaborator and uh, similarly this is just an example but you can take the array and use it for your particular study for different applications. Now the next study uh, was done uh, to screen the sample of specific pathogen resistant genes or virulence factors. In this study, uh, what we did, uh, we took the samples uh, from the uh, women uh, cervical area and uh, the soft samples were taken and uh, they were uh, they went through the similar uh, protocol and it, they were run on the bacterial vaginosis panel uh, from Kaijin. So again, each of these wells over here are the specific bacteria related to bacterial vaginosis and over here, we have, we can test two samples per well, that is we have 48 associated, uh, 48 associated bacterial vaginosis bacteria along with the positive controls. So if we see, then all of these are still here are the, uh, are the bacterial vaginosis bacteria and the last column, the last few wells over here are, are the controls uh, from Kaijin. Um, so uh, this is the plate for the bacterial vaginosis and then the samples were taken from the swab and they were extracted using the Kaiam mini kit and they were mixed with the master mix to put it on the PCR plate and ran on the real-time PCR machine, again, to do the identification experiment. So the results from here showed the bacterial vaginosis negative sample showed negative for all the bacteria, which were negative for bacterial vaginosis, and then other samples, which were candida positive, GV positive and trichomonas, trichomonas positive were showed positive for candida, GV and trichomonas respectively, uh, which shows the efficiency of the array and also uh, different kind of samples were then tested after that. Then another set of study uh, that was done to profile the changes in vaginal flora during the bacterial vaginosis. So for this particular study, the swab samples were again taken, but instead of the bacterial vaginosis array, they were run on the vaginal flora array. So three samples were taken, which were GV positive, but the aim of the experiment was to look at the profiling indication of these three samples amongst them and also between the different pathogens itself. So if you look at the plate over here, this one well performs, uh, this one well includes the bacteria of the interest associated with vaginal flora and the last five wells would include the controls and in this one plate, one sample can be tested. So 
the three GB positive samples were taken. The DNA was extracted, mixed with the microbial qPCR master mix, put it on the PCR plate, ran on the real-time PCR machine, and then a profiling experiment analysis was performed. After doing the analysis, we received a data for profiling of all the three GV positive samples, and the associations are made and shown in the graph over here. So each one of the, on the x-axis are the different bacteria associated with vaginal flora, and each of these little bar associated with the bacteria are the three samples. And another interesting point that the collaborators associated are in the samples with a high GV abundance, there was an increase in co-occurrence of BV associated microorganisms and decrease in abundance of normal flora for the lactobacillus crisp predus. So this has led to another round of research to really understand the associations between different bacteria in different applications. So with this, what were the common themes in these experiments? How to best carry out these focused metagenomic studies? So each case has a user profiling a distinct set of genes or species. And experiments can be easily translated to large multi-factor experiments. And also you could test a range of sample types and do a quantitative and qualitative data generation. So moving forward, how do we really design these assays for the microbial study? Now, as I mentioned before, it is really important to understand the 16-SRRNA region as the phylogenetic marker for bacterial ID. So at Kaijin, what was done, all the sequences were taken from the taxonomy classified by Green Genes Taxonomy, where we took the fairly specific probe and fairly specific primer, combine them together to get a very specific assay. For this, if you would like to do a homebrew method or uh, all the data that were performed to optimize and validate and to create these assays, uh, we started with the sensitivity experiment. The deletion, series, the deletion series testing for PCR efficiency and sensitivity were performed. So each of the assay, each of the sequence, each of the TACMEN probe sequences that were created were tested in terms of their target copy numbers. So they were run on the real-time PCR machine to see their lowest limit of detection, the lowest limit of quantification, and also a linear range uh, standard curve was drafted to see if the range is linear or not. With this, uh, you can determine the sensitive Sens sensitivity of a microbial assay in two terms, the LOG, that is the limit of detection. It is the lower, lowest amount of analyte DNA molecule in a sample that is able to be distinguished from sample that contains no analyte. So often the LOG is reported as colony forming units and then the LLOQ, which is the low limit of quantitation, is the lowest amount of analyte that can be distinguished from a sample with another amount of analyte, often reported as gene copies, since colonies may contain multiple copies of a gene. So LNQ is exceptionally useful for quantitation because it states the limit at which two samples can be quantified as opposed to simple qualification. So in terms of Kaijin statement, we have used the LLOQ to determine the sensitivity of each of the assays and we put it in terms of the number of copy of G. But this is, these are the methods that you would use to determine the sensitivity of any of the microbial assay that you create homebrew or you have taken from Kaijin. Again, uh, 
then the next very important step for the validation of the assays are for specificity to determine the specificity of the microbial DNA qPCR assay. To determine the specificity, the first step is to create the to create the sequences against the 16s rRNA region. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, to determine the specificity, first you will have to create the sequence against the 16S rRNA region in terms of bacteria or any other region in terms of different species. And then you will have to test bioinformatically, which is the best target hit. Once you have determined it, you can create the various sequences which you would like to test in the lab. Once you test in the lab, the way you would proceed is to test it against the genomic DNA from different bacteria and fungi to ensure there are no cross-reactivity. So in terms of hygiene, what we did, we tested against the 119 genomic DNA which we got from ATCC and then they were pooled in different pools and around 10 pools were made and each assay were tested against different pools. Each pool did not contain the DNA from the same genus to facilitate the identification of any cross-reacting species. And each pool contained equivalent to 2000 genome copies for each microbial species. In addition, each assay was tested against human, mouse and rat genomic DNA. So it is really important as when we researched through, a lot of researchers were also creating the pool and testing it against the genomic DNA, but each of the assays were not tested more than 10 genomic DNA. But at Kaijin, we took and we tested it against 119 genomic DNA just to ensure that we are getting the best specificity and there are no cross-reactivity between the two species. So these were the pools that were uh, that were created. So for example, if we take the example of the Campylobacter, each the Campylobacter assay was tested against the pool one till the pool 11, and the other species of Campylobacter were present in different pools to check if they were getting cross-reacted or not. So once this is done, uh, another set of experiments that were performed and then can be performed for the assay validation are to do the spike in recovery experiment to check for the specificity in a complex background. And this is one of the graphs, uh, how it looked for the spike in recovery when it was done on all the experiments, uh, on all the assays that are offered by Kaijin. Then another set of experiments uh, that can be performed uh, to check for the assay validation is to compare the results with NGS. So what the R&D scientists at Kaijin did, they took the same sample, the swab, the vaginal flora swab sample, and they tested it against the qPCR uh, array for the vaginal flora. And also they tested and performed the whole genome sequencing for NGS. So over there, uh, when we looked at the data, we took four samples and uh, the data for the uh, vaginal flora qPCR and NGS are right here in all these graphs and which showed congruence to each other. So there were very similar results and with this we concluded that since both the NGS and the qPCR technology are showing similar results, it's better to proceed with the qPCR technology as the data output is really simple and at Kaijin we provide the complete insight in terms of providing the complementary data analysis for these particular qPCR arrays and assays and also with the qPCR technology the hands-on time is really less that is less than four hours and also the procedure is really simple so if you would like to do an analysis at the species level, it is recommended uh, to proceed with the qPCR technology uh, against the NGS. 
So what are the solutions for identification and profiling from Kaijin? As I mentioned before, for the bacteria region, the 16S rRNA region is really important. What at Kaijin, what we have done, we have used the TACMAN probe technology and we have created the primers and probes against this 16S rRNA region. And with this, we created the three C's for the product, that is the content, custom, and control. And how I define all of these are, for the content, we have the largest microbiome portfolio, that is, we have experimentally verified 580 assays. And when I say experimentally verified, that means we have tested it bioinformatically, and also we have gone through extensive lab verification in terms of determining the specificity, sensitivity, and performance for all these assays. And we have more than 580 assays. And when I say assays, I mean each species, whether it is bacteria, fungi, whether it is genes, that is antibiotic resistant genes, virulence factors, etc. The second point here is the customization. So not only we have supplied the catalog assays and arrays, but also we provide researcher an ability to custom their product. So you can select from eight to 384 microbial species for simultaneous detection and profiling. So from the list of 580 assays, you can select up to 384 microbial species or antibiotic resistant genes or virulence factors, and you can select any layout you would like, put it on the plate and test it for yourself and design your research focused experiments. With this, we have ensured that the cost for the customization and the catalog are not much different so that we give full freedom to the researcher. If you do not know which microbes you would like to test for a particular application, come back to us. We will help you. If you already know which microbes you want to focus, select it, let us know. We will pre-spot it on a plate and give it to you for your research. The third C is the control. We have ensured and we have, uh, we have developed Integrated controls which ensure reliability of results in terms of positive template, PPC, pan bacteria, pan fungal, pan aspergillus, candida, etc. We also have really high sensitivity, that is, all the assays, most of the assays can detect as low as 10 copy numbers, and all the data is available if you are in, if the researcher is interested. So moving forward, what it can do, it, you can, using this assays and array, you can perform two kind of experiment. One is the profiling and the other is the identification. With identification, you will get the answer of yes or no. If this particular microbe is present in your sample or if it is not present in your sample. With profiling, which is also known as semi-quantification, you can compare the amount of microbe or gene microbial species or genes change between the two samples and between and make association in the microbial species itself. And the answers are fold change. And also, if you would like to do absolute quantification, then you can take the highest concentrated positive control, dilute it and create a standard curve to check the number of copies of genes with each microbe to do the absolute quantification. This is the complete sample to insight workflow from Kaijin. So we have DNA isolation that for the sample extraction, the assays and arrays for the downstream application, and then the data analysis, we have the complementary gene globe data analysis. And along with this, you can either do the complete process manually or you can use our automation systems depending on the number of samples. You can either use Kaya Cube, Kaya Cube HD, Kaya Symphony, and then move further with Kaya Agility to determine the integrity of the DNA or RNA you're working with and Rotor Gene Q for the real-time PCR and then the Gene Globe for the Data Analysis Center. For the NGS workflow, we offer various kits in terms of sample disruption, sample preparation, 
NGS library preparation, NGS software, and validation by QPCR. For the NGS library preparation, you can also use our assay kits for QC testing that is to detect species-specific genomic DNA and hosts and host-specific genomic DNA and microbial genomic microbial DNA. So you can take our assays for pan bacteria, pan fungal, which will determine the total count of microbial DNA. And also you can take our assays for human genomic DNA or mouse genomic DNA, etc., with whatever species you're working with, and then calculate the ratio in terms of host DNA versus the microbial DNA to determine the quality of the sample to ensure if you would like to proceed with the NGS run or not. Once you have done the discovery phase with the NGS, you can also use our validate, uh, you can use our QPCR assays and arrays to validate your data and we can always create the custom assays for your particular sequence that you have found through the NGS to determine and to use it for various other application and purposes for your research studies. So this in short is the complete workflow and the complete portfolio for the microbial QPCR. You can start with any sample type that is tool, tissue, vaginal fluid, dairy, vegetables, etc. So any complex metabolite sample you can start with. Then you can use the microbial DNA extraction kits from Kygen. We have seven dedicated kits for extraction depending on which sample type you're using and then all the downstream application of the assays and the arrays are validated on any QPCR instrument. So if you have a rotor gene Q or if you have a BioRat, ABI, any of these machines with a 96 or a 384 or 100 well, you all of these protocols for the assays and arrays are optimized and provided in the handbook. Then we have the product in tube format. One is the tube format, that is the assays each of the bacterial or the microbial species or the antibiotic resistant gene come in the tube and it can be tested for either 20 in terms of assay kits and 100 samples in terms of assays. Or the other are the arrays. The arrays are the application-based focus that is it is focusing a particular application and all the microbial species on the plate are associated with that particular application. And then the next is the custom array, which is you select anywhere from 8 to 384 species or genes with the controls and let us know with the instrument you have. We will pre-spot it on the plate and give it back to you for your analysis. So when we are talking about the QPCR assays, as I mentioned, we have 580 total assays and it is divided in types of microbes, that is bacteria, fungi, virus, parasites, etc. And it is also divide in, divided by body site application, that is airway, blood, gut, oral skin, urogenital, etc. So these, uh, these 580 qPCR assays are also divided in a popular assay by industry. For example, for beer spoilage, we have lactobacillus, megasphera, etc. For women health, we have candida, mycoplasma, trichomonas, etc. So that is why if you have any popular application and you would like to plan us the study with us, please let us know and we would be very happy to help you out with it. Then moving further, we have 16 catalog QPCR application-based QPCR arrays for women health. We have vaginal flora, bacterial vaginosis. For infectious diseases, we have respiratory infection, intestinal infection, sepsis, urinary tract infection. For hospital research, we have oral disease, metabolic disorder, antibiotic resistance genes. Again, if you would like to know which microbes are associated with all these panels, feel free to ask us for the list. For the food and wet industry, we have different testing, food test, testing arrays for meat, seafood, dairy, poultry, vegetables, etc. And some of our popular arrays are metabolic disorder for gut research, antibiotic resistant genes, bacterial vaginosis, and we also have arrays for water analysis and biodefense. So this is how a typical 96 well plate would look. 90 of these would be your species and the last five would be different controls uh, associated with that plate. 
So we have the host assays that detect the genomic DNA to test the sample collection. We have pan bacteria and pan aspergillus and candida to detect the presence of fungal rRNA or the total bacterial count. And then we have a PPC, which is the positive PCR control reaction that tests if the PCR reaction failed for PCR inhibitors from the sample. These come in different formats uh, with sample one, sample two, uh, with four samples, with eight samples. And it also, uh, for the custom array, you can, we have some of the layouts that we have already specified, but we can also work around any layout that the customer might be interested in. So to summarize, uh, we do have some accredited IVD customers using our intestinal panel, uh, our respiratory panel, and also our uh, women health panel. Uh, these are the individual uh, assays, and these are all accredited uh, and are used by accredited IVD customers. And uh, to give a glance, uh, we have a complementary tool uh, called GeneGloop at hygiene.com, and where, uh, where uh, the, you can start with different tools such as browse by research area, browse by biology, etc. And you can find the right products for your application. So please try to visit the www.genegloop.com where you can access, get access to all the complementary tools that are available to make your research really easy and helpful in terms of microbial, qPCR, NGS, all the other product lines also from Kaijin. To summarize, we define the microbiome and the key role it plays in human health, the, re the need and methods for rapid detection of microbial species. We discussed the focused metagenomic studies. I introduced the microbial DNA qPCR assay pipeline which is the largest collection of microbial ID assays available and available in various product formats to simplify experiments. We have the custom arrays and assays, and you can also use for validation and QC for NGS workflow. So with this, uh, thank you so much. And now I would hand it back over to uh, Brenda uh, for any questions. Thank you, Anisha, for that informative presentation. Before we get started on the question and answer session, I'd like to remind our audience how to submit their questions. You can submit questions by typing them in the green Q&A box, which can be found by clicking on the green Q&A button at the lower left of the presentation window. And we'll try to get to as many of your questions as we can. And our first question, what is the difference between positive PCR control, PPC, and microbial DNA, positive control? Very good question, uh, because, thank you, Brenda, it is a really good question. Uh, the difference between the PPC, that is the PCR positive control, and the microbial positive template is, uh, the PCR positive control ensures if the PCR that you put together work or not, and it also takes into account about any innovators that might be coming from the microbial samples. The, for the positive PCR template, there are the microbial positive template that is the oligo of each of the assays that Kaijin offers, uh, which is which is used on the PCR plate to ensure if the particular if the particular assay that the researcher is testing worked or not. So back to you, Brenda. Thank you. Great answer. We have another question. Are the assays species specific? Thanks, Brenda. Yes, uh, most of the assays are species uh, specific and uh, they're specific to a particular uh, species such as uh, bacteria, fungi, uh, uh, 
to the to the microbes uh, such as uh, bacteria, fungi, viruses, etc. And they're also specific within them. So it would be specific to, for example, uh, Trichomonas, GV, uh, a particular species of Candida. And if some of the assays may detect other species, but all the information is available on the website as well as on the assay list that what is the sensitivity of each of these assays and also the specificity for each of these assays and what it detects and what it may detect and also uh, all these results have been uh, placed with the help of bioinformatics research and also doing extensive lab verification. Thanks. Back to Brenda. Our next question, what are the minimum sample requirements for microbial DNA qPCR kits? So the minimum sample requirement uh, depends on what assays or arrays the customers are using. Um, so if you're using an assay kit then and using a 96-well plate, then you can use five nanogram per sample. If you're using a 384 well plate, then you can use two nanogram per sample. If you are taking it from the metagenomic sample, but if you're taking it out from the cell culture, then you can just reduce it 50%. And for the complete plate, for a 96 well plate, it is approximately 500 nanogram for the 96 well plate. Uh, if you're taking it from a metagenomic sample, and it is around 250 nanogram for the 384 well plate if you are taking it out from the metagenomic sample. And again, for the samples from the culture, you can just reduce it to half and use those samples for different applications depending on which kit you are using. Back to Brenda. Our next question. Are the microbial DNA qPCR assays wet lab verified? Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, they all are uh, lab verified. First, they are determined bioinformatically by doing a HIT method for getting the sequences against the 16S rRNA region. And then they are taken by Kaijin and they are lab verified in terms of doing extensive research on these sensitivity, specificity, and determining all the other factors around the assays. And then before, right before it's shipped out to the customer, it's again QC since the microbial contamination is really notorious. So it's really important for Kaijin to maintain the quality control. So everything, all the complete portfolio is lab verified as well as bioinformatically verified. Thank you. Our next question, how can I calculate the number of bacterial cells that are present in a sample using the microbial DNA QPCR assays. Um, so yes, uh, so you can calculate uh, the uh, bacterial counts uh, by calculating uh, the standard curve. Uh, you can, uh, each of the uh, positive template uh, that we provide, uh, that is the oligo uh, for the uh, microbial uh, qPCR assay uh, is 2000 copy numbers. You can plot a standard curve and determine the number of cells uh, for each of the, uh, of of the microbial assays. Great, we have time for one more question. Our question is, how can we identify mixed sequences generated from the microbial sample?
so if you have extracted the DNA from the microbial sample and you're looking for a species specific solution, then you can buy the species specific assay and it will determine that particular assay in your metabolic sample. Now, what is more important is what species it is rather than which sequence you have extracted from that particular sample. If you are starting with next generation sequencing and you have a specific sequence that you do not know the species for, then we can always create a custom assay for that particular sequence and you can use it for different applications and different experimental designs. Back to Miranda. Thank you. That's all the time we have for questions today. I'd like to thank Anisha Karkia for her informative presentation and also, of course, thank our sponsor, Kyogen, for making today's educational webcast possible. Today's webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through February of 2016. You'll receive an email from LabRoots alerting you when this webcast will be available for replay. We invite you to forward that announcement to your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Thank you for joining us. See you next time. Goodbye.